So the answer is yes. I mean, obviously, it costs us a big percentage of our net worth, maybe a billion and a half. And um, yeah, so it, it, there was a time where it really looked like we, we were going to lose everything. We had 50, 60 planes all on the ground at Heathrow and Gatwick and in uh, Sydney and Melbourne and Brisbane. And the health clubs all closed, the hotels all closed. And, you know, the worst would have been, um, you know, 60,000 people out in the streets. We um, sold shares in companies that were public, and that was one way we managed to find money. And most jobs were, were, were saved as a result. But, you know, talking about net worth, I mean, you know, one of the things I suppose, if I resent anything in life, is the tag uh, billionaire. I think um, people don't address you by your net worth. They call you by your name. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, what I've spent my lifetime doing is building ventures that hopefully will make a really positive difference to people's lives. In the I'd never really had any uh, coverage quite as painful as that. Really? Uh, and it's complicated, so it's difficult to explain to people when everybody's hurting. I mean, there were pretty well no families that weren't hurting. But what we were concerned to do was to try to get government support. Um, uh, as happened in America, as happened in France, as happened in Italy. Not gifts from government, but um, underwriting loans, um, so that the cost uh, to the airline going forward was not going to be prohibitive. You know, I, I would say that 99% of the coverage I've had in my lifetime has been fair. I mean, I've occasionally had criticisms, but I would say they were fair criticisms. And it's quite rare to have had a, a, a major knock. But I think, you know, I remember Sir Freddie Laker once saying to me, the way to deal with press backlash is prove them wrong. And so basically what we ended up doing was just getting on and proving that, that our teams were good enough to um, come bouncing back. I started with 200, um, 200 pounds from a necklace that my, my, my mum found and, and we sold. I have paid literally billions, uh, you know, and, and our companies paid billions in taxes over the years. And we've created over the whole time, maybe a, a million and a half jobs. Um, obviously a lot of those people have moved on to other, other jobs, but a, a lot of jobs. The reason I live on Necker was I fell in love with a lovely lady when I was 28, Joan, and I fell in love with a beautiful island. And I live on Necker because it's the most beautiful place in the world to live. I've worked extremely hard for many years, and I now, now use Necker as a base. Um, the personal money that I earn, I give all to charities. You know, so all I, all I can say is we have paid billions and billions to, in taxes over the years, and will continue to do so, and, and our companies pay taxis in whichever country and whichever jurisdiction they're based. I think we've always been an insurgent, even today. So, you know, like our cruise ships, we've got, you know, th three cruise ships against, you know, uh, carnivals, you know, a couple of hundred. Um, I think the, the advantage of being the David versus the Goliath is that you can be much more nimble, um, you can move much quicker, um, you can innovate much, much more quickly, you can inspire your team um, much more easily. You know, so it's a lot more fun, I think, being, being the David versus the Goliath. Having said that, a job of a government is to make sure that if there's anti-competitive behavior by a, 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 big, a big company, that's the principal job of a government, is to make sure that there's a, a level playing field and that, there's, that, they, that, that the big companies are not allowed to get away with it. And I don't think governments are always, always that good at that. I love to learn, if I feel I've Le learned that all there is about something I want to move on and learn about something else and as a result I suppose I've created I suspect if I look if I really went back into it maybe 500 different companies in, in my lifetime in I don't know 300 different sectors but I've learned you know it's just been one long fascinating education an, an education that I never had at school and I wouldn't change it uh, wouldn't change it at all I mean it, 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 one of my books is called screw it let's do it and and if you if you if you if you take that philosophy and you just you know screw it let, and do it you're going to learn you're going to learn a lot you might fall flat on your face but sometimes you, it, it'll it'll work out my own feeling is that i've um, i'm in an extraordinary position and not to waste that the position i find myself in there are a lot of issues this world needs uh, dealing with you've got politicians who can do so much but then there may be only 
you know, two years maximum in, in a particular department before they moved on to something else. I've had 55 years of experience as an entrepreneur and businessman and traveled the world. And I think I'm, I'm in, a, in, a, in, a, in a position to help politicians and, and try to address some of the bigger issues of the world. And that's what I enjoy doing. And I'm not, I'm not going to sit back and not, not make, the, make the best of that position. I've said it before, but my, my approach to life is that the brave may not live forever, but the cautious do not live at all. And I really, I really believe that. And, and I think our family have got enormous satisfaction from pushing ourselves to the limits. <laughs>